Hi, this is Mark with safedaytrading.org. And if you'd like to get free information on how to safely trade day trading activities, stop in and get free information at safedaytrading.org. Again, that's safedaytrading.org. Hey, everybody. Today is 9-13-2020. Ah, it's been a beautiful day. Nice and cool, comfortable at about 70. No rain, no snow. Everything is good. So let's talk about the markets today. The Dow is at uh, 28,000. It's kind of sit there. Uh, I was reading a report that said that uh, they expect a little bit more movement on the NASDAQ down, um, profit taking, and then it'll start moving back up. Um, so hopefully that'll happen. Oil is at 3750. Uh, this is as of Sunday night. <clears throat> I don't think it's going to move much, so it'll stay between 38 and 37 probably. Just too much, uh, too much oil. And not enough guys, people driving around. Oh well, that's the way it is. Uh, gold is at 1949. Um, reading. Some articles that there might be some political activity this week. Certainly nothing from Congress about uh, giving us more money, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and uh, the kerfuffle that's going on in the uh, left coast is going to continue up all the way till probably November 4th, if not, um, depending upon who wins. If not, it could continue all the way till January 20th, uh, unfortunately. But you know what? It is what it is. So I started looking at today's or this week's calendar, and I wanted to kind of share that with you. Uh, there are not a lot of th big things going on until around Wednesday. And I'm just kind of finding it right here. Retail sales is coming out, um, and that'll be a big a big deal. Um, of course, when 50% of it is Amazon, you know, but it's still a big deal, and it could move the market a little a little bit. Um, we have certainly the the oil report um, on Wednesday or um, mid morning, and then. Um, the Federal Reserve is going to come out with their uh, economic projections and a statement. And uh, so kind of heads up on that. That's uh, early afternoon. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they say. Um, the articles I've been reading say that nothing's going to change until 2022 or two 2023 if the Trump administration continues to stay on. Um, On Friday, or on Thursday, um, the biggest thing that's coming out is the jobless claims, <clears throat> initial jobless claims and jobless claims for the four-week average. So those will be big deals, too. Um, that will move, <clears throat> mostly move gold. The same thing with the retail sales. That will mostly move gold. Maybe a little bit of the Dow, but uh, nothing there I'm expecting uh, in terms of uh, major, <clears throat> major upsets. I think the mark marketplace is continuing to go up. Jobless claims will continue to drop, hopefully. Um, and as Christmas comes along, uh, the unemployment rate should continue to drop, certainly through the Christmas uh, season, um, because everybody's going to start packing, or somebody's going to have to start packing them. Christmas presents and sending it off to the houses. Hopefully that'll happen. And uh, other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Uh, I want you to, I want to mention though that it's, uh, it's mid-month September. November 4th, November 3rd is coming. Um, you really have to start thinking about what's going to happen and how to protect your money. Now, as a trader, um, I'm looking forward to it because, again, I can make money going down and I can make money going up. So it really doesn't concern me too much. Um, I just, I'll just roll with the flow. 
and hopefully that uh, you as traders can do that too, so be ready for it. Uh, remember that um, instruments that go down will go down 66% faster than they go up, so we could see some uh, warp speed going down, or you know maybe not too much going up. Uh, I expect it to be from uh, late October through late November to be, you know, to be something that uh, 2020s uh, days of consternation are going to be epic size. So be ready for it. You know, one of the things I want to talk about today, and I found a great little article about it in a blog uh, from Investors Live, was dated May 11th, 2011. And the reason I want to talk about it is because students of mine, and even listeners to my podcast, they have, a lot of them don't have a lot of experience in terms of trading. Um, they're learning how to trade. They're trying to set up their systems, uh, just getting ready for that trade, uh, trading. And I want to share something with you. And it's a little list. It's, it's actually two lists, but... I want to talk about the list that they talk about in terms of unsuccessful traders. Most unsuccessful traders are uneducated in terms of trading. They're kind of winging it, you know, my cousins, nephews, brothers, dogs, uh, <coughs> dog walking person had suggested that uh, this stock would be good. There's no real reason they don't know why they're picking something and how it's going to, how it's going to do where it's going to go and what's going to happen for it uh, a lot of unsuccessful traders ignore the risk and by that let's put it let's put it kind of bluntly uh un, ignore the risk means they don't use stops okay and uh they get in a lot of trouble pretty quickly um you know they may only make two or three trades and they already lost their their stake and uh because of that, you know, they get frustrated and, you know, realize that they can't trade or they don't want to trade or they can't afford to lose the money that they lost. Um, another thing is they have repeat failures. Repeat failures means that they probably lose their stake about four or five times in their careers uh, because they really don't know what they're kind of trying to do, how to get into a stock. Um, how to set a stop up for this stock or option or whatever the case may be, and what's the target that they're trying to get out of. Um, so be aware of that. The other thing, too, is a lot of unsuccessful traders don't adapt. They don't go back and look at what happened and why and try and learn from it. And because they don't learn from it, um, they continue to lose money. And this may be you. I mean, you know, we've all done it. Uh, I started trading... Uh, occasionally in the 1980s and in most cases I lost money all the time I traded because I didn't have a method uh, I didn't have a discipline I didn't have a focus and that's what we as safe day trading are trying to teach you all of those things and they accept that um, there's a randomness to a trade again they're they're not educated they're just kind of winging it. They have no information to uh, fix them in terms of understanding which way the, and direction that the instrument's going to go. And th this is just a list of the unsuccessful traders. Now, the successful traders are educated and continue to educate themselves all the way through their trading career. Um, believe me, um, I started really started looking into the process in the early 2000 and by 2011 I had hit gotten into it pretty deep in terms of trying to understand and uh, making better sense of what the market does and how it does uh, and that really has helped I'm prepared uh, for trading uh, I have the right tools um, I have the right discipline and I think I have a fairly good knowledge of direction of the trade and uh, and how to implement that. And again, as a successful trader, not only do you need to understand the market, okay, 
Uh, the real, real emphasis here, too, is you need to understand your platform, whether you're using Thinkorswim, NinjaTrader, TradeFire, whatever the case may be. You have to understand your system and be prepared, be prepared for things that don't work, which surprise you, okay? And that uh, in trading, for me, the biggest issue is, is that always having that at least the stop loss set up, not only for my uh, commodity trades, but also my, my uh, option trades, okay? Uh, I'm adapting. The rules change in, in trading, and so you've got to be ready to adapt. You've got to be ready to learn different signals, uh, figure out different things that go on. Um, you know, we recognize that between our time trading, between 7 and 8 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time in the morning, there are a couple of points which are not at the half hour or the hour um, that um, things happen, and there is some uh, not randomness to it, but uh, over the years we've realized that it's a, it's an intentional movement, okay? And uh, so you've always got to adapt. We're also always looking at more indicators. Uh, you, you might say, well, you know, you guys got a lot of indicators up, but, you know, things change. Um, you know, what we had before and what we have in another year may be, you know, there might be two or three indicators that we've either replaced or just thrown out. And so be aware of that. And as a successful trader, you need to do that too. And the other thing is to be, uh, believe in accountability, okay? Not randomness, but believe in accountability. I got into this trade, I knew I got into this trade, here's why I got into the trade. It said that I should. Now, what happened to not make it successful or make it successful? And the interesting thing is, is that a lot of successful traders may look at what did not make it successful, but you've also got to look at why it was successful. What happened? Did it fit all my indicators that I thought it should have? Those are questions you've got to eat, ask on each side of this. I thought I'd share this with you give you an idea uh, of what to think about being a successful trader so you can move from being an unsuccessful trader to a successful trader. Talk to you later. Hey everybody, I want to mention too that we have a YouTube site called Safe Day Trading, which we show you trades that we make with the techniques that we use. You can also send me uh, questions that you might have at mark at safedaytrading.org. Anyway, talk to you later.